property and the interaction or the, the, the outcome of those individuals maximizing their expected utility is actually worse off. They're, they are each worse off than they otherwise could be had they um, acted in a different way. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so let's take a look at the standard sort of two by two cell of a prisoner's dilemma demonstration. So we have Bonnie and Clyde, they're prisoners. So each of them can either cooperate or defect. Okay, cooperate and defect. And then uh, the combination of their decisions to cooperate and defect leads to what's called the payoff matrix. So each of these question marks will have a number attributed to the utility um, gained by each of the um, prisoners depending on which cell uh, they are in. In other words, whether they both cooperate, whether they both defect, whether one of them defects and cooperates, and vice versa. Okay, so what do we have here? So given the setup of the game, the, the, and the reason the prisoner's dilemma is the prisoner's dilemma is really about the nature of the payoff matrix. It's a specific type of payoff matrix, and we'll see that in a second. So what happens if Bonnie and Clyde cooperate? Well, if they both cooperate, as the fables suggest, they'll get one year in jail each, right? Which is not good, uh, but it's not, uh, it's, 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 um, it's not bad. Um, so that's what they do. So if they both cooperate, they'll get one year in jail each, given the given the fable story there. Now, what if they both defect? Well, they'll get ten years in jail each, right? And so it's obvious, right, that uh, well that they'd prefer to be here, right, than here, because here is a total of two years in jail. Here is a total of twenty years in jail time. Now, what happens? What's the outcome if only Bonnie defects? Well, then we're here, right? She defects. Clyde cooperates, and in this sense, cooperates means cooperating with each other, right? So, n essentially, not betraying the fellow. Defect defecting means betraying your fellow prisoner to the police. So, if they defect, remember uh, the oh, the values here. The left value is always for Bonnie, and the and the value to the right of the um, comma is is for Clyde's value. So, if they defect, remember the we're talking about years in jail. So, if they defect, if Bonnie defects, in other words, if she betrays Clyde, and Cl Clyde uh, doesn't betray Bonnie. And she is free. She gets no years of jail time, but Clyde gets 20 years. And the negative is is here just to suggest that it's a, you know, it's it's disutility. You don't want to be in jail. So she's much better off than Clyde is. And because it's a symmetrical game, uh, the opposite's the case. If uh, Clyde betrays Bonnie and Bonnie doesn't say anything, so Bonnie gets 20 years in jail time and Clyde gets zero. Now. What is the socially suboptimal outcome here? Think about that for a sec. From the perspective of the, of the society, and in this, in, this, in this sense, the society is just Clyde and Bonnie, right? Where would they like to be as a society? Well, the answer is obvious, right? They'd like to be here because that's two years of jail time total rather than 20 years of jail time in each of the other three cells. Now, of course, the, the jail time is distributed differently, which is why they don't end up getting here, right? because of the nature of the distribution of the payoff matrix okay and what is because but, but now this is socially suboptimal right and this is what remember going back to the to the video clip this is what adam smith argued would be the outcome of individuals acting competitively right the society would be better off in other words they would get to this level but what game theorists found out was that in fact individuals acting on the basis of their own self-interest would end up in a prisoner's dilemma situation always um, getting here in defect effect now. So cooperate cooperate is not a stable and, and, and another way of saying that is that cooperate cooperate up here is not a stable or an equilibrium outcome. Right? In the prison dilemma the equilibrium outcome is defect effect as I said right here. Now and it's moreover it's a special type of equilibrium outcome. It's a Nash equilibrium. And what does that mean? Well a Nash equilibrium is a situation in which no individual has an incentive to unilaterally change her choice because she can not make herself any better off by doing so. Okay. Um, and in the prisoner's dilemma situation, there is no uh, incentive for either of these individuals to move once the, once there's once they're in defect defect unilaterally to cooperate. Because because if Clyde were to move from here to cooperate, right, then he would end up being uh, he would end up being here. And, and, and the same would uh, the case would be the same for uh, Bonnie. Now, a Nash equilibrium is not socially optimal, right? Why? Because, as I explained, the two players, uh, in other words, society can do better. And they don't because defect is the dominant strategy for both, right? This is important, uh, a dominant strategy. What, is, what does it mean? What does that mean that it's a dominant strategy? Well, let's look at Bonnie's reasoning, okay? Um, so 
she, she says to herself, "What if Clyde cooperates?" Okay, so we're here on the left-hand side of the of the, uh, t of, the of the of the uh, matrix here. Um, we don't have to worry about this because she's 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 wondering. Okay, let's assume that Clyde is cooperating. So we're, he I, we're I can either cooperate, Bonnie says, or defect. If I cooperate, then I'm here. If I defect, then I'm here. So she looks at she looks at her only her outcomes, right? And she says, "Okay, um, what are my outcomes?" Well. Um, if I cooperate and he co well, while he cooperates, then I get one year in jail time. If I defect, in other words, if I betray him while he's um, uh, admitting the admitting to the police that he did, um, committed the crime, then I get zero years of jail time. And, and if I'm um, rational, if I'm instrumentally rational, then I will choose what I will choose to to defect because not being in jail is better. It's it's a higher utility than being in jail for a year. So I will defect. Okay, there you go. Now, let's. Uh, uh, then she says to herself, "Okay, well, what if Clyde defects? Now we're no longer here, but we're here on the right-hand side. Um, if Clyde defects, then once again, uh, I can either Bonnie says to herself, cooperate or defect. So if I cooperate, okay, and once again, I'm looking at the the values on the left-hand side of these uh, commas, right? Uh, if I cooperate, then I get 20 years in jail time." Okay. If I defect, I only get 10 years in jail time. So, from the perspective of a rational decision maker who's maximizing her expected utility, um, I will defect, right? Because 10 years in jail time is m is twice as twice as good as 20 years in j of jail time. So, from that perspective, right, she should defect. So, uh, so remember back here, right? Once again, if he cooperates, the the strategy is to defect. If he defects the strategy is to defect so the dominant strategy is is that she should defect because regardless of what Clyde does whether he cooperates or defects right she uh, is better off defecting and of course Clyde has the same um, rationale right so the same reasoning and his dominant strategy is also defect so what you'll get is you'll get both of them defecting on the basis of uh, maximizing their utility and that you know that's one of an important insight in, in, in game theory is that uh, you'll end up here and now one of the important implications of this or one of the important sort of uh, uh, assumptions is that they aren't able to cooperate and, and as you can as, as you uh, as you'll be able uh, as you can think if you're able to cooperate if you're able to um, moreover have written agreements um, then you can in some sense, be be certain that your opponent um, in this game will uh, you c will will uh, will um, be convinced to cooperate and will will keep that promise. So it's about trust, and you know this is an this is an, an, an important situation. Uh, you know, a goal all sort of um, you know the, right here the 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 use, utilization of, of game theory in 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 the, in the Habesian problem of political order right you know we talked about Hobbes and the state of nature and and how the state um, uh, society was sort of a response to the state of nature and you know societies are, are are fundamentally you know you can think of societies or the state of nature actually as sort of what's called an end person uh, prisoner's dilemma now a way of resolving the prisoner's dilemma aspect is to create a state create a rule of law create uh, an overriding authority right who will then um, keep people to their word or in fact entice people or influence people or force people to cooperate when in situations when it may be better to defect right you know like, you can think about it in, in your everyday life right what if everyone were um, able to you know drive uh, as fast as they wanted to or or uh, or in wh whatever direction or whatever side of the road that they wanted to, right? Uh, it may be better for them um, at that moment um, from a from purely um, instrumental perspective, but uh, uh, society as a whole will probably be worse off. Okay.